In this video, we're gonna talk about underpinning. Most homeowners and some contractors don't know what it is or how you go about it and what the purpose is. Here we have our plan for our foundation and they actually give us an underpinning schedule. And you can see some of the sections A, B, C. So section A, all three sections can be dug out first and poured, then B, then C, with three days in between each pour. Here's a little diagram of where our rebar is supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like. We're supposed to come out four inches past the face of the existing wall. So here we have the existing back of the house. This was a crawl space underneath here. And now it's going to be part of our full basement. We dug out with a machine, which we were lucky. Most times you have to dig out by hand. So you can see I marked each section. I used one, two, three, so my guys could better understand it. So section one, there's another one. And this is the last one. Then we have two, and then we have three. So you can see the old footing is about five feet above our new footing level, which is not good because that means we're undermining our footings. This footing is about a foot above our old footing in the basement. So on the other side of this wall, there's our old crawl space access. On the other side of this wall, we have a full basement. That wall is going to come down and all of these will be formed and poured according to the underpinning schedule. Now our footings will be at the right height below our floor and have no chance of blowing out. Now this is important for a few reasons. If you left the footing midair like this and poured in front of it, the only thing would be that would be holding these is the dirt. And that's not really a good option. Some towns are more particular about this than others. This town, I know the inspector is very particular, so we're gonna follow the footing underpinning schedule to a T and hopefully pass our three inspections for the underpinning, underpinning of our footings without failure. Then we have to form and pour our new so addition. In conclusion, underpinning is a lot of work. If you see it on your plan or if the architect draws it on there, make sure your contractor is aware of it or maybe you can ask him if he knows about how to do underpinning. Um, it does add some cost, but it is very vital. Thanks for checking us out.